you're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we have opened the mailbag. Oh yes. Lots of you lovely listeners have been sending in different comments and questions through the website, uh, thisweekinproperty.com, through LinkedIn, through Facebook, you name it. And what we've done is we we gathered them all together. And then I called upon one of my partners in crime, one of my colleagues here at PMW, the great Mr. Sean McIntyre. And Sean's been on the show before, of course. And there's a lot of fantastic things. One of the top trainers with the PMW company. And I brought him in on the call because I wanted to randomly throw out quite a few of the questions. And as well as myself responding, get Sean to do the same. And it was great. It was great fun. There was loads of great queries and things that you put in. uh, And it helped to ignite a lot of different discussions and thoughts around various parts of the property world and getting into property and what we've seen and what our own opinions and experiences are. It was good fun. I really enjoyed it. So uh, keep it up if you want anything else asked or answered or checked or whatever. Then by all means, go to the website thisweekinproperty.com and you'll see the, the contact function within there that you can send stuff into us to have a read for you. But... Without further ado, let's open the property mailbag. So, Sean, good morning, sir. It's good to have you here. Good morning. Before we go into this mailbag, and I dip my hands into this massive mailbag of questions, and God knows what's going to come out of it, uh, I want to talk to you, (laughs) or more importantly, I want the listeners to hear that you've been up to something yourself recently as well. You've been launching podcasts and doing things. What is going on? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I've launched a podcast called Property Talk Radio, um, and the whole idea behind it is, you know, I love podcasts, I've been listening to podcasts for years and years, and there's so much good content out there, you know, you can really pull a lot of content and value and lessons from, from different people, um, not just in property, you know, but, you know, mm. a lot, of, I, mean, I started, it was a whole personal development thing, it was those sort of podcasts I was listening to, Yeah. obviously since getting into property. I've built up that kind of list as well. Um, and I just figured, you know, it was time for me to kind of share some of my lessons. I just thought, you know, why not? Why not start a podcast, share some of the things that, that I've been learning through my journey so far. And the whole idea is hopefully other people out there that are the same as me, that, you know, enjoy listening to podcasts, enjoy learning from other people, that hopefully they'll be able to pull some value from, from what I'm giving out as well. So, yeah, just another mm-hmm. one to add to the list for, for other people, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I like it. And is there particular themes or topics that you've touched on already? Yeah, so I mean, so far, I've, I'm have i only maybe four or five podcasts in at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just been looking at some of the basic stuff that, that I feel most people kind of get wrong when they get involved in property. You know, like the whole, I think the first one I did was on capital growth. So for example, everyone knows what capital growth is. Everyone knows that if you buy a property now, then, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years time or whatever, the, the value is going to double, you know, so you've got that constant growth that's happening. But there's mm-hmm. other ways that you can benefit from capital growth. There's other ways that you can create that yourself, you know, and almost force the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where, I suppose that's where the, the professionals and the amateurs differ. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the pros know this stuff. They know how to benefit from that and how to force it. Whereas the amateurs tend to buy long term and they're waiting for ages but really yeah. they could make their money so much quicker mm-hmm. you know so so that was one of the topics that I've discussed uh-huh. um, you know and looking at just different forms of income different ways that you can generate income people you should need round about you as well and yeah I mean we'll just see where it goes I suppose I'll share some of the lessons I've learned um, and I'll probably bring some people in in a podcast as well and share some of their lessons and, and just really try and bring value to people that, that are listening to it Brilliant, I love it. So people can find it wherever they they find their podcast. We've all got these, you know, different players and what have you. But they're searching for remind us again, property talk radio. Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah, yeah. So you, you can, can do that. Um, and again, yeah, 
Property Talk Radio. Just you can get its website as well, so propertytalkradio.com, um, and you can subscribe through that. There's you know, you'll get me on social media and stuff as well from that site too. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Excellent. Another one for the guys to listen to. Right, let's see what we have here. You will be filled with trepidation, no doubt. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> to the, thanks to everyone who's got in touch. Uh, most of them came through the website, which was brilliant. So that's this week in property.com. And you've used the be contact form there. But I've had quite a few through LinkedIn and Facebook as well. And I'm just kind of, I'm putting up a wee document on my screen just now so I can tick them off one by one. I've got no specific order to to do them in, but we'll see if maybe some connect in that way actually. Right, let us see, what do we have? So first up, Alison Turnbull from Inverness. Can you remember your first ever experience or deal in property and how you felt at that time? Oh, right, I definitely know mine on this one. Okay, Sean, you want to kick off in that one? Does that uh, ring true um, with yourself? Yeah, yeah, so I... I there's two very specific moments I remember uh, when I first started in property. And the first one, I actually shared this with some of the guys on our property protege course recently, mm -hmm. where I was talking about the very first viewing that I ever went to. Um, and the whole idea is we were talking about comfort zones, you know, and really getting out of your comfort zone, forcing yourself to do new things. And I, <laughs> it's so funny when you, when you listen, like when I think back to that moment where I, I'd booked a viewing in with the agent I drove up to the property and I sat in the car and uh, I, I, almost, I almost drove away because I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea what I was going to say when I went in. I had no idea, you know, what sort of questions you should ask. This was my very first viewing. I mean, I, I bought my own house at this point. Um, luckily, m my wife dealt with the whole thing. Like I had <laughs> pretty much no involvement in that process. So, yeah, I mean, my, my first ever viewing, I almost never made because I was too scared to actually get out of the car and walk in and start a con. I mean, that's, that's where I was in my journey. And this is the thing. People come into pro, uh, Property Protégé, and even other people as well, where they think that they're starting from such a, a bad place or, you know, they, they don't even know how to get going. And I just relate them to where I was. I'm thinking, God, if, if I can go from that to doing what I'm doing now, then God only knows where where they're able to go. So that was yeah. my first, probably, experience, I would wow. say. Um, now, how did you talk yourself into going in? How, what was the self-talk to get you out the car? <laughs> so I, I, um, I'm quite brutal with myself <laughs> sometimes. I, so at, at moments in the car, I, if I get a moment of inspiration or I, I realise that I'm not you know, playing to the level I should be, mm -hmm. I... I send myself audio notes. I, I'll record an audio note of my thought process at that time so I can listen back. And sometimes when I listen back, I'm wondering who the guy is that's shouting and swearing down the phone at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow, me. that's a powerful you know, <laughs> Yeah, um, so sometimes, like, uh, sometimes I need that. You know, the, the gentle little bit of encouragement doesn't always do the job. Sometimes <laughs> I, just, I just need a, a good boot up the arse, you, you know, to... <laughs> Just go, go out and get this done. So that was pretty much the self-talk, you know, sitting in the car thinking, I mean, really, you want to be a professional property investor and you can't even go out your viewing? I mean, come on, let's get a grip of yourself here. What is the worst thing that could happen? And then all the worst things that could happen through my head. And the worst thing would be walking in, not knowing what to say, walking out, and who cares? Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's pretty much the, the worst thing that could have happened. Brilliant. I so, like that. I like that. That's a kind of Tim Ferriss trick, actually, yeah. looking at the, the downside. You know, what is the worst? And, yeah. and he looks at it in a financial sense when he's doing deals and stuff. Goes, okay, if I go for this, if I try this deal, if I try this investment and I lose everything, what's the worst that can happen? What's the implications? And how quickly will I be able mm -hmm. to get back to that baseline? So that, yep. that's, that's cool. I like that. You're actually, you're actually talking to yourself. <laughs> you're your own coach, your own counsellor. That's fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. And did you say there was yeah. another one you wanted so, to I mean, join? Yeah, so that, that, that was my first experience of, of actually going out and, and getting started. Mm -hmm. um, but the first deal that I did was uh, it was a I found, found on the market. Um, and I actually spoke about this in one of my own podcasts as well. So you know, they'll hear the story on that. But pretty much yeah, I went in, was lucky that it was the seller themselves that was doing the viewing. 
Right. So, you know, straight away, I just came up, locked into negotiation mode, you know, really building that rapport, um, getting to find out the real reason they were selling. Ah, uh, yes. Because it, it was on at a bit of a discount, you know. So I'm trying to like dig a little bit, find out, you know, okay, because it's, as we always say, it's never about the money. You know, it's, it's how can I help the seller here? Because they're always in a situation that they, they need out of. Yeah. Um, so I, I was in the house probably for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, mm -hmm. I got a whole load of information, a, a whole background of the life story. And really, they, you know, they needed a certain amount of money to get the property off their hands and to be able to kind of wash their, wash their hands of it and move on. Um, so, you know, at that time in my journey, I had no money to invest. I didn't have any investors lined up. So it was really just a straightforward, you know, packaging up the deal and selling it on to someone else. Mm -hmm. So usual fees, two and a half thousand pounds. So that was great. I was thinking brilliant. And this was, this was maybe only six or seven weeks into, into my journey. Brilliant. Um, so I was thinking brilliant, two and a half grand. This is going to come through. This will be great. I took it to Paul. Um, who looked at the deal, looked at the structure, and then you know, pretty much did what, what he does best, restructured the full thing, showed me how to be a little bit more creative with it. Um, and before I knew it, I was banking you know, over £5,000 from the very same deal. Very you know, same deal, yep, yep. Yep, the seller, the seller still got, got everything they needed. They still got the same amount that I had offered. Um, the investor, you know, they still got the deal that they were looking for, but yeah. it was those little tweaks, you know, and that structure, which we always talk about, that's what makes the big difference. Yeah. That's where you really see the benefit of knowing how to structure deals in the correct manner. And I was like, brilliant. So that was my first deal. I was thinking, this is amazing. I am never doing another deal for two and a half grand again, because <laughs> now I know how to do this. <laughs> so yeah, that, that pretty much set the tone for me going forward, which was great. Absolutely yes. brilliant. And that, again, you know, you remember your first deal. And the funny thing was, um, because it was a motivated seller, and this is something that a, a lot of people, you know, you'll be the same, you hear people asking, you know, do you not feel like you're taking advantage of them? You know, do you not feel like you're, you're doing them a disservice and stuff? And the opposite is true, it really is, because I, I gave them more than what they needed to, to get. Um, but I mean, throughout that full process, I was round at the house two or three times, I was around at our daughter's house, having you know teas and coffees, and, and explain to them the situation because you're really trying to just make them feel okay and and make them realise that you know we are going to look after you basically. Yeah. Um. So went through that whole process, and then once the deal had completed, I went to meet the seller to collect the keys, and she just gave me this massive hug. And she <laughs> she couldn't thank me enough, you know. Oh, that's and I I was still. I was like, wow, you know, because there was that little bit of doubt in my mind as well when I'm thinking, yeah. am I taking advantage? I knew I wasn't, but that little bit of doubt comes in. Yeah. And she gave me, she gave me a big hug. Um, she couldn't thank me enough. And and I walked away from that thinking, wow, th this this is why we do it. And this is what we always talk about. You're not, yes, we want to make money, but you're not in it for the money. It's what yeah. value are you giving someone? You know, what service are you offering? And at the end of the day, I, I was able to, you know, allow them to move on with their lives. Yes, exactly. Give them what they truly wanted. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. That's brilliant. Never even knew you got a hug out of it. That's the first time I've yeah. heard that story. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Right, well, for myself then. So what about you then? Aye, if I split it in a deal, and it's a deal I knew straight away as soon as I read that out from Alison. Uh, I thought, yep, I know where I'm going. Uh, but experience, I'll touch upon that actually, because just when you explained about the viewing, well, the first ever kind of experience in property so outside just looking at a book was going along to a networking event uh, and I've spoke about this before because that's where I met Paul McFadden mm. uh, and we kind of bonded a whole friendship that's lasted since then and he's got his whole fantastic PMW company and helping so many people now but it was uh it was at the Jury's Inn uh, in Glasgow uh, I might get the letter from, I think it was SPNC, I think that's what it stood for, because they, they're no longer active, I don't believe. Uh, but it was brilliant because that was the first time of, oh, okay, you're reading books and stuff, that's great. You've, you've always been that way, you want to analyse things and research things, but you need to get out, you need to connect with people and build up your team and talk to other characters and mm -hmm. see who, who you're getting involved with as a broker and all this kind of stuff. So I found him, found him in Glasgow just down from my work, went along, Felt really intimidating because in my head, these were people way ahead of me. You know, I'm, I'm just this guy. I was, I was in IT at the time. Yeah. Uh, I'm walking in here, 
I've read, you know, so many books and articles and everything else, but, oh, God, these guys are doing it. And then that, that boy there standing up at the front of the room, he's talking about his portfolio and, you know, it sounds this magical thing. Uh, and there was a lady there, Debbie, funnily enough, who became one of our uh, letting agents in Edinburgh. Uh, a, a lovely lady, Debbie Brown. Uh, I met her that night as well, which is, I just realised that, that was the first time I'd met Debbie. Uh, and that was great, just this beautiful connection because she was so helpful. And the people there were so helpful and open. And, aye, so what are you looking for? What are you trying to do? And, well, I've done this and I've done that. And I could hear all the stories, which was fantastic. But then the key moment was, yeah. it was this young guy at the back of the room, um, sitting up looking, paying attention, talking to people. And I just, I just started talking to him. I'm, I'm okay with mingling. I'm okay with getting on to people because I'm, I'm kind of curious about what their, what their story is. So I start, just started mm -hmm. chatting with them. And we had a key... And this is something I speak about when we talk about networking, when we're at a protege event. The key between us was, during the small talk, during the chat, I mentioned, I'm going to a Harve Acre seminar next month. And his eyes lit up. I mean, I'm just back. I went, wow. what? Wait a minute. T. Harve Acre? No, nobody even knows who T. Harve Acre is, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know? That's not the circles that I'm in. And here's a guy telling me, yep. He's just actually been. This is and well, that was it <laughs> because uh, as, as we yeah. tell as we tell the guys in Protege, if you have a connection that this person thinks the way that I can resonate with, or this person I, eyes and ears are open in the same way the minds are, mm -hmm. look onto that, build that relationship, build that connection yep. because it's then it's more than the money. Just what you spoke about. Uh, with your scenario and your deal, it's more about the money. We, this can go somewhere, and by gosh, it certainly has went somewhere, that's for sure. I mean, I think <laughs> it's done <laughs> since then. But yeah, on to yeah. the deal then, uh, a wee bit more mundane, but I think it kind of helps listener as well. First ever deal was in Edinburgh, talking about Debbie, actually, she became the letting agent for this one, and uh, working with Paul on it, jumped into it, and I was, this is what happened, I was so involved in the preparation for it, the numbers for it, mm -hmm. the spreadsheets for it, the, okay, we've got this discount, I've got the lawyer lined up, I've got Debbie's agent, she knows the market, that's cool, here's my spreadsheet, here's my, I'm gonna get my wee document together, there's my Dropbox collection. The way I do everything, brilliant, magic, 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 and it was like, I can't remember the time frame just before the deal, the paperwork came in from the solicitor, and I'm signing it all, I'm checking it, and I'm cross-checking it, and now oh, this is good, this is good. And then came the part for the signature at the end. And that's when <laughs> and the, the Let's just say the bottom fell out of the market. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a nicer way of putting what biological. Like, this, is, <laughs> yeah, this is real now, this is this real. <laughs> yeah, S just got real, as they say. <laughs> uh, because I signed it and looked at it and went, I'm signing paperwork here for a mortgage and a property that I am never going to live in <laughs> and it's more in value for my house at that time. <laughs> what the wow. yeah. <laughs> am I doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was scary. But yeah. again, from the, the guy in the car who couldn't get out without swearing up himself on an audio note uh, to you know, <laughs> doing deal after deal after deal, I went from there, sheer panic, and I never slept that night. I swear I never slept. I signed the forms, I put yep. it in the envelope, I, I even, and I remember this now, I even went outside, it must have been about midnight, to the, to the, to the nearest post box I could get to and jammed it in there before I changed my mind. <laughs> 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 I thought, I'll wake up in the morning, you know, what, what am I going to, I might put this in the bin, this is how scared I am, but I did that, yeah. I came back, I never slept, a flame and wink, uh, but fast forward now, my God, I can just, I've, I've done deals where I've never even seen the place, now yeah. not stupidly, because people in my power team have seen the place, you know, uh, other p business partners have mm -hmm. seen the place and ticked it off, but it's now, that, aye, whatever, aye, where's the form, aye, okay, how many, th aye, okay, aye, fine, Tick, 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 send, email, accept, sign, anything. Yeah. It's amazing. And people should certainly feel that. Um, be prepared for being scared. Uh, but if you stick at the journey, do what Sean's doing, do what myself's done, you'll progress beyond levels you just won't believe. Um, and it's, it's yeah. a transformation. It's amazing how quick it's amazing how quick that can actually happen though. Yeah. You know, like from going from that 
that feeling of fear and oh my god what am i actually getting myself into here this is this is is actually a real thing i'm about to do and then deal number two deal number three it just becomes you know as billy farrell always says it's the new normal you know we've we've upped up the game we've got a new capacity yeah and it's just this is now just the world that we're in and everyone has to go through that it doesn't matter how many books you read you know how many podcasts you listen to how many videos you watch until you actually go through that process and you feel that feeling for yourself like I love I love the example Paul does. You can either do it now or you can do it in six months' time. Yes. But whenever you do it, you're still going to feel that, still that pain, hard. that fear. Yeah. So like, really just get, get it done, you know? <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. There you go, Alison. There you go. I hope that helps you. Right, who's next up here? So as we screen down, Lisa. Lisa Jameson from Leicester. Right, but uh, <laughs> right, okay, I've, I've read the wee first line there. I know exactly what she's talking about. Big Davy the pirate <laughs> is an amazing character. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to your show about seven times already. Who has been? All oh, right, okay. Who has been your favourite guest to interview? Oh, that's a cracker. Right, see while I'm answering this one, Sean. I want you to think about mm-hmm. your favourite character on any podcast you've ever listened to, or or it might be the host. Who's the person that you kind of resonate with, you know, whether it's property, self-development, right. I'll yep. leave that with you. So I'll answer this for Lisa. Uh, well, that's a brilliant question, actually. So I'm definitely going to come back to Big Davy. I think when it came to the fascination of details and nitty-gritty and what's the answer to this and what's the answer to that, Brian Wright was my favourite. He was one of our the kind of main tax advisor and accountant. I loved getting pulling perils of wisdom out of Brian's head because he just God, he's like an encyclopedia. So have a listen back to that show if you haven't done so, uh, Lisa. Uh, when it came to inspiration and a, a real, real personal bond, that was my interview with Peter Sage. Uh, because he's been um, my main business mentor for a good number of years now, uh, and getting a chance for me to interview him, that was bonkers for me. That was that was a real paradigm shift for me, uh, and I loved it. I get so much out of it, and, and the listeners did as well. But you're right, Lisa, big Davy. Who am I talking about? Davy Hutton. So <laughs> if any listeners haven't heard that show with Davy Hutton, look for that. Go into thisweekinproperty.com. Go back, and uh, the man's just... He's a legend. Character is the word, actually. Character's the word. Uh, that show started with me presenting Davy with a picture of him dressed up as a pirate that my, my daughter Cara <laughs> had drawn for him. And then we were just off and running. And let me tell you, listeners, we went from property to Donald Trump to drugs to what's the other thing? Auschwitz. Uh, oh god man and that's that's how he rolls that's how Davey rolls it was like it went on for hours hours on end absolutely brilliant man a, a, a giant heart as well which is fantastic so if you've not heard that listen back so Sean back to yourself what sticks out yep. when you listen to podcasts and stuff um, so uh, not necessarily my favourite guest but definitely my favourite hosts mm-hmm. um, and I've got two to, one is uh, Tim Ferriss, you know, which I know you're, you're big on Tim as well. Yep. And it's just his ability to to be a great host. Like he's just incredible. He pulls out so much information. Um, and sometimes like, I'm listening to him and I, I try and analyze him a little bit in terms of, okay, when, when, the, when his guests answer questions, I'm trying to anticipate his next question. You know, <laughs> where's he going to go with this? What thread is he going to pull on? And nine times out of ten, he pulls in one that's nowhere near what I'm thinking. You know, <laughs> and it opens up a whole new rabbit hole. And I just, I love, I love listening to his podcast. They're absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But the other guy is, um, is Dan Carlin. You know, oh, his podcast. Yes, is, yes. It's just, is it is, it is incredible. One of the, so the best the ones I've ever heard. What's his podcast called? Keep them in, in the, so Dan Carlin. Okay, so, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Hardcore History. There you go, listen. Yeah. Right, so carry on, Sean. And again, he can he can take a topic and it will be each podcast can be anywhere between three and five hours long. Yeah. You know, and the topic will be over four or five podcasts. So it's incredible the amount of time that he must put in to research, to everything. It's just it's bonkers. But one of the ones, I, one of the ones I loved the most was the the blueprint to Armageddon. You know, where he talks about how close, 
how close basically the world came to, to ending through yeah. nuclear weapons. Just it was just just crazy. But it always yeah. brings a nice little twist on it and gets you thinking, you know, well, why are some countries that like them and some ones aren't and stuff. But you know, he's he's done loads of different topics. Um and he's he's a host, he's a guy that makes history like enjoyable. Yeah. You know, you, you learn so much from it. So He's the guy, if I'm doing long drives, he's the guy I listen to, you know, because you, you can be doing a, a six or seven hour drive and you don't even realise you're driving that long because you're oh, so engrossed. You are, aren't you? And, yeah. and the way he... Yeah, you're in his story. It's not a, it's not a kind of statistic yeah. boring well. And then, uh, you know, I'm doing World War Two. So then the, the Germans advanced to this part of Poland and 5,000 people died. <laughs> no, no, no. It's this whole story he digs into. And, and he says it himself, I'm not a historian. Yeah. I'm not a historian. I'm just, I love this stuff. I read all the books. I get knee deep and everything. And then I'm pulling together what I've found about it. Uh, you know, and th this person found that and this mm -hmm. researcher found such and such. Yes, oh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's, that's a great one. A great one for listeners to, to dive into. So Dan Carling, Hardcore Histories. Right, next one up, Matthew. Matthew Toner Oldham. Uh, just listened to your interview with Peter. Oh, Peter Sage, right? Okay, just listened to your interview with Peter Sage and how to overcome adversity in business and life. Love the interview. What's the biggest challenge for you that you faced in property? Oh, right. Okay, right. Sean, challenges, mm -hmm. adversities, the the low points, uh, the things you know. It's not all love, lovely and fluffy. It's not all rainbows and flowers. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. journey. What uh, what pops up <laughs> for you when you hear Matthew talking about adversity? Um. So, uh, I had a moment, you know, pretty early on in my journey where I was getting a few deals over the line, things were going great, um, and I had raised some money from, from uh, preferred investors and stuff as well, and everything was kind of running smoothly. Mm. And then everything, like every single thing pretty much just fell apart. You know, the builders became unreliable, refurbs weren't getting completed in time, you know, deals were falling through the last minute, all these things, and it just kind of all, all came on me at once. Mm. Um, and I remember speaking to Paul about this because at the end of the day, this is where your mentor is worth their weight and gold. It really is. Um, and I remember going back to Paul and talking to him about some of the stuff and some of the advice he shared with me about his own journey, you know, which, which came, gave me a little bit of, of comfort, you know, to go, right, okay, so this, this is the game that we're in. You know, it, it's never always just sunshine and roses and rainbows and stuff. You're going to hit some <laughs> moments. Um, and for me, I, I had a moment where... I was banking a lot of money, but I wasn't seeing any of it, you know, because because everything else was falling apart. Um, I was having to cover payments over here, cover payments over there. I was losing thousands and thousands on on refurbs that had gone wrong, and builders had disappeared, and it was just it was a whole a whole mess of stuff. Um, and I sat down with Paul, and he was like, you're, you're, "Where's your focus? Mm. Where is your focus? Are you focused on what's going wrong?" You know, and you're getting sucked into that because if you are, then, you know, how are you going to fix that problem? Because yeah. that's where you're at. You know, you're in the problem. You can't do anything about it. You need to just go out and focus on, you know, raising more finance. And that's what we always talk about. Always be raising finance. So go out and raise more money. Go out and raise more funds. Go out and find more deals and just keep plodding along. And for a, for a good while, you know, I, I, <laughs> it's crazy. I, I, I talked to, to Joy, my wife, about this, and, and we say, no, listen, we're banking this, we're banking that, but we're not seeing any of it because it's gone over there and it's going into that one and stuff. <laughs> and she's like, oh, what's going on? But eventually, <laughs> you know, you just, you just keep plodding through. And that is the two main things that you really, really need to have in this game is, one, you need to have focus, mm -hmm. but two, you need to have consistency. You must be consistent. Uh, yeah, the baby steps, the compound effect, all these things we talk yeah. about. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's it. You know, Because at that moment, it would have been so easy for myself or anyone else to turn around and go, right, I've, I've had it with this. You know? yeah. I'm going to go and do something else because this, this isn't working. It and even a law yeah. you know can be done because yep. you see other people doing it because yep. you're not quite there yet. You're yep. thinking, oh, maybe it's not for me. Maybe this won't work out. But if you just keep going, if you know, if, if you take your focus from, you know, from the problem onto the solution and you just consistently hammer at that, then things, things work themselves out. 
you yeah. know. And this is what I love because at the end of the day, we always talk about it. There is a system, there's a blueprint, there's a process, there's a roadmap that if you just keep walking down that map and you keep following the steps that we put in place that were in place for me when I started as well, yeah. then you know the results are there. They're always there. So I mean that that was that was a tough one for me because there was no one thing that was going on. There was so many th- things that were happening that were falling around about me. And I, I you know I got to that point where I was almost freaking out, you know, and I was like, right, I've got a mentor, why am I not using them? And that, that, sim- that simple thing, you know, the simple question, okay, Sean, so where is your focus? Mm-hmm. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and that, was, that was a big lesson for me. Um, and again, from going through that adversity, you come out stronger. Yeah. At the end of it. Because you, you survived know, so it. Things go wrong. Back now, can't you? I thought yeah. I survived that before. I've done this before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where the confidence comes yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Actually, I know. last night I was... I was recording people who had been in the recent protege course, uh, and what we're talking about was was their comfort zone stretchers getting dragged out in front of the room, or going through the intense networking phase, or yeah. the elevator pitch phase, you know, whatever. And they, they were saying the exact same. So it was that fear and the trepidation before it. I can't do this. I can't. And then after it was like, I'll go up again. By the way, I'm I'm ready. I've done that now. Mm-hmm. There's that feeling of I've been here yeah. before. There's a comfort from that. There's a confidence from that, which is cool. Yeah, I like yeah, that. And that's that's exactly why we do it, you know, because yeah. they're going to face they're going to face things like that. And it, yeah, one of the challenges they might face is going to a working event and having to stand up and talk. But one of the other challenges they might face is a deal falling through last minute, or you know, losing out on funds that they thought they were going to have. And again, it's all, what we do in the course and the project course is all designed to prep them for these other moments because it's the challenge might be different. Mm-hmm. But the lesson is always the same, you know, yes. you just fight through it. You need to keep pushing through it. Mm-hmm. And where is your focus, as you said? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Because when Paul's talking to you at that time, it says, where's your focus? Everything there is real. It's not kid on. There really is problems. Mm-hmm. There really are challenges. Yeah. There really is. But there also really is the opportunity to do something else and, you know, raise that finance and get something else in. Both of them are absolutely true. We're not saying, uh, you know, it's kind of Pollyanna, look at me, la, 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 it's not happening, I'm not having problems, la, 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 la. <laughs> We're not saying that. It's, no, no, they're both real. This stuff yeah. is really happening. But what are you going to do? Are you going to focus on that bad stuff and get defined by it and quit and collapse? Or are you going to focus on this stuff here, the opportunity, the, the solution that's there? Which one? Go for Choose. Go for it. Because they're both valid. Love that. Yeah. Uh, right, for myself then, challenges and stuff. God, there's so many. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I remember one, going back to Edinburgh, funnily enough, I remember after getting the first property in Edinburgh that we did there, uh, another one came up quite quickly. And I thought, oh, you beauty. We're off and running here. This is fantastic. Um, and it dragged on and dragged on and dragged on. And it was a nightmare. There was Everything kept popping up. Or well, the title deeds have got such and such in them, and the, the seller is now looking for this instead. And uh, the investor that's kind of getting pulled in is only going to this level, and the builder's got a problem. And the lighting agent, oh God, it was just bit after bit. And then eventually, when we thought we had every single thing nailed down, it then collapsed with about three weeks to go, and I yeah. was just so gutted, and it was. I had built up such an emotional connection to it, you know. Uh, it's a property I'm never yeah. going to stay in, and yet I'm emotionally connected to it. The one thing, oh my God, one of many <laughs> things we now tell uh, our protege people to not do is a deal or not a deal. And if it works, it works, brilliant. If you've done everything you can, brilliant. Everything in your control. But if it falls apart or they don't want this, he doesn't want that, then so be it. Move on to your next one. And yep. that, that was massive. That was a massive struggle for me. And it was only because of the time. It was because of the time involved. You know, I, mm-hmm. I'd invested too much, too much energy, too much concentration, too much focus. And when someone else took that away from me and I couldn't do anything about it, that was hard. That was hard to take. It really was. And is, it, is that why you were... Is that why you were so emotionally attached? Just yes. due to the sheer effort and time that you had, you had to apply to this one? Yeah, yeah. totally. I had put that in mm-hmm. and then that... Get, it, it got taken away with the deal. 
And it was, oh, God. Right. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, and I remember another scenario I'll touch upon. Oh, my God. Boilers. <laughs> uh, people say, uh, don't say the B word. I've, I've got a different one, and it's boiler. <laughs> because I remember, oh, I remember like clearly there was a, was it seven months? It was either a six month or seven month period within a particular year and across Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Ayrshire, they were collapsing everywhere. It was like a, mm-hmm. I think it was, it must have been the winter time. There was a bad winter and then that had, you know, laid on to the problems you get with pipes and pressure and everything else. And it was like, right, bang, mm-hmm. that's yeah. gone. We need a new, but oh, for God's sake. And then someone else, the, the boiler, the heating might stop. So you would, we, we sent our engineer out there. So he was working on that. That's cool. That's just going to be a part. But he fixes the part and then says it's went again. And then he fixes another part and then he's on mm. the phone again. And we're like, oh, God almighty. And no, nope, sorry, lads. It's a new boiler. I went, oh, no. And it was <laughs> one after the other after the other. Brand new boilers in all these places. And it was like, this is yeah. crazy. This is, this is, I hate property. <laughs> I hate portfolios. Why yeah. the hell did I yeah. want this? Why did somebody talk me into this? But we got there. And the good news and this is, is we built up a buffer for it. You know, the that looked a tasty yes. savings plan there. Oh, look at that. Oh, your beauty. Can't wait to cash this in. But no, sure enough, that buffer was used for the purpose it was built for. It was to, you know, these, mm-hmm. these problems that were going to put these fires out and carry on. Sorry, were you going to say something? Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that that is one of, the, one of the biggest problems that people have is they build a port. I mean, I was talking to someone just the other day there who their whole plan is to build a portfolio, leave their job, and, and live off the income of the portfolio. Right. I'm thinking, you know, great on, on paper. Yeah, that sounds good, and it probably looks good too. But what happens when a boiler goes and wipes out six months of your rental income? Yeah. You know, oh, I, n- I never thought about that. You know, what happens if two boilers go? <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. People, they get so caught up in the, the glory of property and... For some people, it's almost egotistical. You know, I've got a portfolio. That's I've right. got 10, I've got 20, I've got 30. But, but how much money are you actually making? How, you know, can you actually live off that? Yeah. And 19 out of 10, it only takes something. It takes one thing to go wrong on a property. Before you know it, you're, you're scrambling about, trying to pull money together. That's why we always focus on, on, on trading as well. Yeah. You, you, do, you need to have an element of trading in your business. And that should be a cash flow. That, that's yeah. where that comes from. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. There you go, Matthew. And Matthew, I'm not even going to touch upon the story of a property in Zolcoats with a tenant who hasn't paid, who goes missing, who you chase through a window, and who has a massive cannabis farm out his back garden. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to leave that story for another day. <laughs> so, who have we got? Helen. Helen Fishley, Carlyle, oh, this was through LinkedIn, right, okay. I'm constantly getting, oh, this actually touches upon something you said earlier. I'm constantly getting let down by trades. What's the secret? What's the key? How on earth do I get on top of things? Ah, the trade, Sean, the builders. Ah, how do yep. you make it work? <laughs> how can we help Helen? What's the key? Yeah, the, the key, the key is for me, and again, a lesson, that I was taught years ago, but it t- took me a long time to learn myself, <laughs> um, is to always always keep control, always remain control and control of the situation. And the way you do that is by holding the money. You know, as soon as you pass that money over, then the builder has control. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that you don't pay the builders, obviously you pay them. <laughs> but you know, if, if you've got a builder, for example, who's coming in looking for you know a, a good hefty deposit up front to get going for me I, I i don't tend to work with those sorts of builders anymore because if they need that much money now bear in mind that money will cover things like materials and stuff as well yeah but they've got credit accounts you know they've got accounts with with where they're getting the materials from and they can get 30 days 60 days to pay off so there's no reason that they really need that much up front so yeah give them a little bit for possibly stripping the property out a little bit for labor but the way the way we teach as well to do this, and this is what I, I do it myself now as well, is I pay them in three sections. Mm-hmm. So I'll give them a little bit to start, just to go in, get some labour done, and then when near a third of the way through that project, I'll go I'll go on site and I'll evaluate where where they're saying they are, where I think they are, 
and mm-hmm. we'll agree on on that price. Okay, so you've not done that, you've not done that, but you have done X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. So let's agree on this amount. And if they're happy and I'm happy, I'll transfer the funds. And then right. they go work again and do the next thing, you know. Right. And I've had it in the past where I've my my mistakes have came where I've I've then built up that trust. Mm-hmm. You know, where I did do it that way before, but then it got to the point where, you know, they were they were good for it, so to speak. You know, yeah. I would trust them, I could give them a, a bigger deposit up front and they could go and do stuff. and then it got to the point where they then had the control. Mm-hmm. Because I've had a few properties where I've paid builders money before mm-hmm. the work was done, and then you know they've used that money to pay for other jobs, and then they need to go and do more jobs to cover my jobs, and it's <laughs> it's just you end up in such a bad scenario where you know, they've they've got the money, so you can't even take them off site to go and pay for someone else to come in because they've got the money for the job, yeah. and really they decide when they turn up, you know, they decide what they do and where they work. And it's just, it's an absolute nightmare. So for me, what I do, I, we've got a great builder um, who we now, we've now brought on to you know, PMW is one of, one of the, the builders that we use for all the company stuff as well. Yeah. Um, and Nick, who you've already done a podcast with, he, he's absolutely fantastic. So I've been using Nick for the, the last wee while now. And the difference between Nick and other builders is Nick works the way that, that we work. You know, he'll, he'll go in, he doesn't have a cash flow problem in terms of he needs so much money up front you can go in get the work started and in terms of communication this is one of the even more so than the money the communication is the biggest thing and nick is fantastic at that you know he'll he'll give me updates on what's been done that week what they expect to get done the week after when they will be looking for payment you know so it gives me time to get to get all my ducks in order make sure i can go out check the site you know get the funds to where they need to be and I would say the biggest thing is getting a builder who can work like that, who can bring in their own trades as well, because that will save you a lot of hassle. Yeah. You know, p- people try and, listen, you can save a good, a good couple of thousand pounds by getting the individual trades in, but where is your time going? Your time's going and trying to organize all those trades yourself. Yeah. You know? and, and so when your focus is there, your focus isn't on getting the next deal, it isn't on getting the next source of finance through. Yeah. You know, and so we like, your thing as well. You exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So I mean, that I went away from individual trades. Um, I bring in one builder who can bring all the trades together, who yeah. can organise the full thing. And I suppose that if you if you are going to look for a new builder, which it sounds like they might need to do if they're going through a bit of hassle just now, is is have the conversation. Yeah, you know, actually have a conversation with them. Let them know what it is you're looking for. And maybe from that conversation, you'll know that they're not the right fit because that's not what they're willing to do. So yeah. there's no point in getting them to start the job at that point. You know, you, you have a conversation. It's almost like you're interviewing them, but you're not really interviewing them, but you're trying to find, you know, how they work, what they can bring for you. Um, and if it's, if it's the right fit, then you'll know it's the right fit. But you yeah. need to agree on something and you need to make sure that you always try and keep that control. And money, when it comes to builders, money is going to be the big driver for them. If you're yeah. holding the money for them to get the job done, they will get that job done for you. Mm-hmm. Definitely. There you go, Helen. The three C's, control, conversation, and communication. I think that's a, a nice way of wrapping that. And uh, just to echo what Sean was saying there, in fact, uh, Nick Goot. So the, the show we had, I think it was called The Builder's Perspective. So if you look back in the archives, uh, it's not too, too, many, too many weeks back, actually. Uh, Nick is into all the nitty gritty about that, how he works, how he's seen other people work, what's the pitfalls, how to you know, check for references, uh, have that conversation with them. Uh, and just as Sean says, that constant communication. Okay, where are we? What are you expecting? What are you expecting from me? This is what I expect from you. Uh, and it's a, mm-hmm. it's a relationship. It really is. Yeah, oh, definitely. Brilliant stuff. Right, now why have I got, I've got two together for some reason? Oh, right, I can see why, because it's uh, kind of tied together, different subjects. Right, Lee, I think that's Lee, it's L-I, so my apologies if that's wrong, if it's Lie or Lee, but Lee Mancha from Bradford. Uh, UK interest rates, very low now, low for a long time, uh, start to creep up. Will this progress or stop? Right, okay, so that's a question around interest rates and opinions and stuff. And then I've got it hooked together here. Another one, but from 
Humas, I think it is, Humas Sabik, apologies again if that's wrong, in London. You've asked a lot of your guests their opinions on Brexit and the impact. What is your own thoughts? Right, aye, so it's a kind of financial thing, bigger picture thing. That's why I've kind of put those two together. Right, okay. Um, any thoughts yourself, Sean? I've got a couple in mind myself. Yeah. I mean, with the, with the interest rates, and listen, we all know they've been low for a long time. You know, it's been a, it's been a good market to get in and, and get your properties just now. Mm-hmm. But when they're, when they're that low, then you know, I suppose the lesson that we need to make sure that we know is that they're only one way they're go- they're not going to go lower. You know, so there's only one way they're really going to go, and that's up. So it is making sure that when you're buying, again, it's all about your due diligence. It's 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 looking at that foresight. Yeah, if you're doing a buy to flip, you know, and you're going to be offloading it pretty quickly, then you're you're, you're probably not going to be affected too much by it. If you're taking on a, if you're building your portfolio, you're taking on buy to lets, then this is definitely something that you want to factor and in, into your figures when you're doing your calculations because this this is where I see a lot of people making mistakes where they're not thinking long term. You know, they're taking on a buy to let, but they're really not thinking long term yeah. because they've not thought about the impact that it could have. And I mean, you know, half a percent can make a big difference to your cash flow depending yeah. on, on what, you're, what you're bringing in, what your mortgage is. So right. it's important that people factor that in. And you know, we're seeing it already where lenders are getting a little bit more strict, you know, they're doing mm. a little bit more on the stress test kind of thing. Um, and that's all signs that they know that it's going to go up as well. So they're making sure that their money's safe just now as well. So we need to make sure that we're on the ball and that we're doing the same. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And for Brexit, for the bigger picture, this is something that God seems to be dragging on forever. Any yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you? to be honest, no. <laughs> cool. You know, I, 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 I look at it and think it, it's just, it's another challenge. It's another thing that's in the headlines that the media are putting out constantly. It's in your face. Here's, here's a big, listen, we've always faced challenges. You know, even before I was involved in property, there were challenges that people had in property. You know, it's not, it's not a new thing. Yes, it's a different challenge, but what you'll see is the people who don't know what they're doing, the people who aren't really professional investors as such, they get scared and yeah. they, you know, they exit the market. Mm-hmm. And listen, that's it's great for me. I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. You know, the more people exit, then the more opportunity there is for me to go and snap right. up some of these deals. Because well, at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> their houses, people need houses. You know, Brexit happens. They don't, they don't bulldoze all the houses in the UK because because of Brexit. You yeah, know? <laughs> no, that's perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick away a few of those threads as well. Totally. Um, I mean, the, the interest rates. Yep, totally right. Very low, creeping up. Yes, correct. Their only way is up. Correct. Uh, I think the the good thing there is that the government, and I mean whoever it is, mm-hmm. it can. They can't jeopardise an economy with any sudden jolts. So yes, it will go up because it has to, uh, but it will be paced out long enough and steady enough that you should have plenty of time to be able to react. So I, I don't have any fears there at all. Um, and, and we can see that that's how they're doing. You know, there was a tiny, tiny increase. Yeah. And then that's it. Okay, let, uh, let's have everybody catch your breath again. And then we might come back to this. We might go up another wee bit. So, so that's mm-hmm. one thing. Uh, and, and Sean, right, you nailed that as well. Get the numbers right. You know, get your numbers right right now. Don't think, oh, I've got, I've got a wee cash flow. Yeah, but it's only £50 a month. What the heck are you doing? Why is that your criteria? One wee quick <laughs> change or one tiny, tiny movement in interest rates and that's gone. It'll be swallowed up. So, yeah, we've got to get the numbers right. Got to get the deal right. That's for sure. Um, and the Brexit thing, yeah, I, I've got my whole political, economic opinions on it in general and why it kind of was mm-hmm. came to the result that it did do and people playing on certain fears and certain unsavoury elements um, to get to what they wanted. And I can see loads of, uh, let's say the word dangers, uh, and specific areas to do with uh, the market and trade and controls and that kind of stuff. But down, you're yeah. asking about property, of course, Humas. Um, down in the world of property, guess what? We're still on an island. That's that's the beauty of the UK property market. We are all on an island, this fixed place. <laughs> right? We're not a gigantic Russia or a gigantic North America. We're this tiny wee island and it's supply and demand. 
it's the it's the age old thing about business, and it doesn't matter what the business is, but it's supply yep. and demand. And we've never ever 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 built enough houses that we need, and we probably never will. And whether mm-hmm. it's Brexit in and out, whether your passports red, blue, or rainbow, whether the interest rates are seventeen percent or zero point six, everybody still needs shelter. We need that place to be. And that market will have hot spots and bubbles and this, that, and the other spread across wee different things. Or look at London, it's bananas. And look at this part of the northeast England, you can get stuff really cheap here. Yeah, and it's, but in general, we're on an island, the supply and demands, and it's a market that's always going to be fed. And that's why we love it so much. And that's one of the elements that we, we teach of why property is your number one investment vehicle. You know, it's a great mm-hmm. place to be. Right, cool. Let's crack on a couple, just a couple left because I need to give Sean his day back. We have Carol, Carol Jameson. Kirk, oh, no, I know that. That's, that's Kirkubri. I was going to say Kirkudbury. I know where that is. That's in Scotland, Kirkubri. Hello, Carol. I'd love to get into property as I hate my job. I love listening to the podcast and hear how others have done it. How did you make the change from your previous employment? Aha, age-old question about making the jump. Uh, This is a conversation actually we had with quite a few of the people in the the recent Protégé event. So for yourself, Sean, where did Sean jump from and how did he jump? Yeah, so I came, I guess my background was nothing to do with property. Um, (laughs) You know, I've said it before, I was a youth worker for nine and a half years or so. And I jumped from youth work into motivational speaking because the books I was reading at the time, I was big into personal development and I realized that I was basically living within my comfort zone, pretty much. And public speaking was, as it is for many people, is, you know, one of my biggest fears. So, and my, (laughs) I don't know what you would call it, but maybe like a midlife crisis of some sort, I decided to go for an interview um, at a company that, that specializes in more based on speaking. So <laughs> I, I went, went for the interview um, and then, you know, to my surprise, I, I actually got the job, which was, which was more terrifying than the interview itself. <laughs> um, and before I knew it, I was traveling up and down the country, you know, going into schools and, and doing two or three hour talks to, to anywhere between 50 and 200 people at a time. So that was, that was almost like my first jump. But then from that, I knew that I was constantly on a path to improve myself. You know, so I learned how to do the speaking. I learned how to get a little bit better at that. And then I, you know, by chance, I'll not go into it too much because it's on my podcast anyway, but by chance I met Paul McFadden and Billy Farrell. And that's where I found out about the whole property training programs that they were running and what they were doing. And I was just like, I, I want to come along to one of these and, and find out if it's something I can do. Mm-hmm. So for me then, that was where my interest was peaked. Um, I had went to the course, so I had the knowledge, I had the information I needed, I had that roadmap to follow. And then it was really just finding the right time. And everyone's going to be different. Everyone has their right time. You know, we work with some people, as you'll know, who they leave here for the event uh, and they hand their notice in on the Monday. <laughs> they pretty much they go into work on the Monday morning and hand their notice in. Um, in fact, I actually... Touching on that, this is this is a little bit freaky here because the, the way I made the jump into property was I decided I needed to have you know a few months of safety net there basically get a few months wages behind me so I knew that I I could get a little bit of run at it mm-hmm. and I started to bring my hours down from full time to then start work, you know, working part time right. and I gave me a couple of days a week where I could really get you know to build relationships and get out to view and and get up, up to speed with my area that I was going to be working in. But what, I, what just popped into my mind that I forgot was that while I was at my old job, I wrote out my, my letter of resignation. You know, I wrote that out and I dated it in like uh, four or five months' time, for example. Right, and I put it in my drawer and I totally forgot about it. Uh-huh. Right. And then while I was doing, while I was kind of building up that income um, and I got chatting to Paul a little bit more, I was really tapping into his, you know, his knowledge and his expertise. Mm-hmm. and things just kind of happened that when the moment came for me to make the jump to go full-time in property I was like right now I need to go and get my letter of resignation hand that in and I realized I still had it and it was it was dated like literally within weeks of each you know wow. within the day I was actually handing it in uh-huh. the day I had wrote on it you know four or five months beforehand 
Um, that was <laughs> it was that close. I was thinking, whoa, that's a little bit freaky. That's a bit freaky. Oh, um, but that, I mean, that was how I made the jump. You know, it, it was more of a more of a step, you would say, than a, just a full on blown jump, as some people do. Yeah. But there's still that element. You know, there is still that element of okay, I'm I'm walking away from a wage here, a secure yeah. wage. Which again, I mean, say how secure is it? You know, you, you're not in control of what that other company does. It's it's a false security that you've got. Yeah. Um, but walking away from that at the time to then go, okay, now I'm responsible for banking my own money. Now I'm responsible for getting up in the morning and doing what I need to go and do and generate that that income for myself, and my family, and stuff. So that was that was how I did it. Um, and, and yeah, again, that fear it's it's always there. You know, it's going to be there, and it is. What I love is when people step into that fear. Mm-hmm. That's when they realize what they're really capable of. And yeah. this is, this is the, the simple truth is that if you've got the right knowledge, if you've got you know, the correct support, which is what we, you know, we bring to the people that we work with, is that it's the, the support they get as well, along with the content, the information, to really help you go out there and start getting those wins. And what you realize is, is if you are, as I said, if you're focused, if you're consistent, the wins come. You know, it's as simple as that. But yeah, you, you need to make that jump. Um, and that was that was how I did it myself. You know, more of a kind of built up to it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not the sort of person who could go all in like that. You know, I, I take my hat off to the people who can leave us on the Sunday evening and hand our notes in the Monday morning and go, that's it. I am going all into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know something? I, I think you are all in. I think you've done it the all in way, but you've you've just you've built your buffer up before the jump because the jump is I'm quitting and I'm property. So I would actually class you as one of those shit yeah. burners, you know, because it might be that uh, I know one in particular uh, who obviously did it uh, uh, the course of the week the weekend. Um, they might already be in a, a financial position that that buffer exists that they think. Actually, I've got enough in the bank there that I'm going to resign and start property, you know. Mm-hmm. And you've do, you've done that as well. You've built up that buffer to then go right. I'm going to resign and go into property. I'm going to re- that's it because I think there's I think there's two. And this is for people going in full time anyway. We should probably touch on the fact you can do it part time. Um, but for for the full time people, I'm in, I'm in property. I'm in full time. I think there's ship burners and pendulum people. Uh, right. And I, th- I would I would class you as the ship burner there because you've handed in your notice and then you went to working properly. And there's other people that do that as well. I'm just going and I'm going, that's it, I'm done. I'm burnt the ships behind me like Cortez did. Obviously, this is what we're talking about. And then there's pendulum builders. And that's, that's what I've been. I've been a pendulum builder. So while still in my full-time employment, I was, be, I was able to manage building up my property. So in the lunch breaks, in the early mornings, in the late times, in the weekends, blah, 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 one by one by one by one, building up the, the research, the knowledge, the information, the, the connections, the deals, etc. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, now we've got one. Well, okay, there's another deal. There's another deal. And then people who do it this way, it's like a pendulum. So that starts to rise on the right-hand side. And then they reach a tipping point where they think, this is working. And uh, the money's getting generated. My business is flourishing. Uh, and I've got it under a wee head of steam here. And it's now reached a point where I'm making as much as my business, my, my employment, sorry, or I'm making a, more than it. And then it tips them so that they can then, I'm going to go part-time in my job now. And then I'm going to go right down in my job. And then they can leave yeah. it together, you know. That's a kind of a cool way of doing it as well. But I think it is horses for courses. I think people are different. Mm-hmm. They either have that within them. No, no, I need the fire underneath me so I can charge ahead. Or they might be looking for more security. And no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to build it up. I'm going, to, I'm going to, part time. I'm going to build it up. And part time, just to finish on that, uh, loads. Of, I know loads of people who are part time in property because yeah. what they've done is they've read uh, something like Rich Dad Poor Dad, which, funnily enough, was my my Kickstarter for wanting to do something. And he talks about the the quadrant. Uh, and again, if listeners haven't read that, I would definitely encourage you. So on the left-hand side, you've got the E and the S for employed or self-employed. And on the right-hand side, you've got B and I, business owner or investor. And you can, if you want, you can 
have your foot in the left hand side, you can be employed. You know, you might be some kind of counsellor for children who just loves their job so much. It just is fantastic. I'm saving lives and this is satisfying and fulfilling and all these kind of things. But you know what? The wages mm-hmm. suck and my pension's crap <laughs> and this, that and the other. So what they do is they can put their foot in the other camp. So while they have the counsellor, they can become an investor and they can build up the savings yeah. to invest. And what is that? Is it property? Is it the stock market? Whatever. Or they can build up a business. Actually, I do this thing on the side where I'm a dog walker or I'm a, I'm a landlord or I, I fix bikes at the weekend, whatever it is. So they're a business owner as well. And they've kind of got the two of them. And, you know, aye, yeah. it's, it's interesting. There's so many different ways you can get involved. I think it's fascinating. Uh, but certainly for, for Carol's question about the full-time, she obviously hates her job and wants to go the full-time. I think there's those two ways. You burn the ships or you're a pendulum swinger. There you go. Right, Sean, last one, last one. Hey, Alwyn or Alwyn, A- A-L-W-Y-N. So apologies again. Alwyn Rossley, Cowbridge. Uh, great to hear fellow Welshman Matt on the show. Very inspirational. He's spot on with how us young people look differently at homes, houses, and renting and owning. I'll need to look him up when I'm next in Cardiff. Ah, good stuff. How is he getting on? Ah, Matt. So this is, of course, Matt, uh, Sean, this is Matt Sol- Soltis, it must be, uh, yeah, Al- yeah. Alan's talking about. Yeah. Uh, and you know yourself as well. A tremendous guy, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's top class. He is. I mean, that is... Uh, so I'll be honest here, Richard, I've not listened to that podcast yet. <gasps> oh, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> it's on the list. I'm getting down there. I'm Probably. getting down it. But I, I've I've spent you know a lot of time with Matt as well. Um, obviously with him coming through property protege, you know, and, and working with us a little bit closer. But Matt, he's a great guy. He is an absolutely fantastic guy. And from the, the personal chats I've had with him as well, I mean that is a man with a vision. It yes. really, really is. And I I love what he's doing. I mean he's he's one of these people who, when you're standing talking to him, you get fired up. Yeah, you know, that's right. He actually, energy. W- w- without, uh, it's, just, it's infectious, it's infectious. Yeah. But without him directly challenging you, he uh-huh. challenges you to, to question your own why. Because uh-huh. when you ask him why he does, you're thinking, whoa, that is a big, big vision. I love it. And then you walk away thinking, man, that my game here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Why am I in this? Uh, is it not just, just to make 10 or 15 grand off a refurb or something? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a boy who thinks big. Uh, and again, listeners, uh, yeah. go back in the show. At what, it's either called Cardiff or it's called Wales, uh, and it's Property Chat, uh, Matt Saltis. And it's a fantastic story, vision, uh, his childhood. And, and there was a real, real critical moment uh, from his youth, which is now the fire underneath him to create his future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a big, big future, a big vision, which is, uh, yeah, it's outside himself. You know, Tony Robbins talk about that. You should be doing something that's bigger than you, doing something that's outside of you, uh, because that's when you get a true purpose, yeah. a true mission, a true vision. Uh, and yeah, that's it. It's incredible what he's doing. And it's great, it's great to see those role models, those, those people uh, doing things the right way, doing things the proper way. Uh, and yeah. doing them successfully, you know, which is which is brilliant to see. Yeah, that's a nice way know actually to end on. I like that. Good, good shout, Alwyn or Alwyn. Sorry, these these Welsh guys are going to attack me. Uh, Matt will be my bodyguard. He'll keep me right. <laughs> so, Sean, listen. Thanks a million for your time. Uh, look forward to listeners hooking in with you on Property Talk Radio. Make sure you, guys and girls, uh, look out for that wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, the website itself, PropertyTalkRadio.com. Uh, you can see the the archive, the show notes, the subscribe function, all that kind of stuff. So you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, Sean. And uh, thanks for being on the show. I will do it. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Hi, folks. It's Richard here again. I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. Now, listen, I've got two links to help support you on your property journey. And I want you to write these down when it's safe to do so. You might be driving in your car just now listening to the podcast, and that's fine. But please make sure that you get back to this and write down these links. Okay, are you ready? Got your pen in hand? So the first one, thisweekinproperty.com. Now that's the website for this podcast. On there, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out. 
What you can also do on there is catch up on tons and tons of past episodes. There are hours and hours of property related content and some amazing guests with some fantastic insights to help you on your property journey. So that is this week in property.com. Okay, next link propertyprotege.com. Now, let me spell that one out for you P R O P E R T Y P R O T E G E. That's propertyprotege.com. Now, what's it all about? Well, the Property Protégé Intensive is designed to give you the lift that you need into the world of property. And if you've already started, if you've already got some experience, then this can help you accelerate your progress even further. The experiences that people have had at Protégé and the success that they've achieved afterwards has been life-changing for many people. So go there right now if you're serious about property and if you want to build a highly successful property business. That's propertyprotege.com. So there you go. That's two links to some fantastic resources that are going to help you. And listen, talking about help, can you help me to help other people? You see, the more that we can share this podcast then more people can learn from the fantastic guests that I've been so lucky to talk to. How can you help? Well, it's very simple and very quick. Just a short review on iTunes is going to help make that happen. If you go to thisweekinproperty.com forward slash iTunes, that will guide you to the very place that you will be able to help other people. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for listening into the show. And I look forward to bringing another great guest to you in the next show.